Hi, I'm Chris Rowan. I'm the CTO of the IP group of Cadence. And I'm going to talk to you today about mapping convolutional neural networks onto a high-performance Vision DSP, the Cadence Vision P5 DSP, which is a general-purpose vision-oriented DSP that's useful not just for neural network applications, but in fact for a wide range of image processing and vision applications. When we look at neural network implementation, we know that we have a huge flow of, of data from our image stream. And in a neural network, we also have a large flow, a huge flow, of weights which represent the recognition coefficients which are going to be used uh, in this neural network. And what we need to understand is what are the attributes of a processor that are going to make this fast and efficient. And I think we can identify some key characteristics that will really make a difference. First of all, we know that there are compute requirements. For example, the rate of multiplies is the single play greatest predictor of the performance of a neural network in a well-balanced machine. But we're also going to need to implement a lot of data reorganization because we have uh, to analyze the data in a number of different permutations and structures. We're going to need to implement nonlinear functions very efficiently. We're going to have to do things like max pooling, finding the largest in a group of features in order to propagate the most appropriate value to the next level. And we need to also cope with a, a requirement for flexibility. Neural networks is an area that is evolving very rapidly, and new variations of the algorithm come along every week. And so we can't just say, oh, well, here's one right way to do it and fix the hardware to go through a very specific pattern. In fact, the ideal structure for a neural network is going to depend a lot on the details of the training. It's going to depend a lot on the data set in question. And it's going to even vary from layer to layer as you go through the different um, feature maps and features of features. And so flexibility means that we may want to make every pass different. We're going to need easy programmability in order to uh, satisfy these simultaneous requirements for being very efficient and yet adaptable to changing needs. In the case of Vision P5, has recently been announced, we have an almost ideal combination of capabilities. First of all, we have enormous multiply bandwidth. We can do uh, up to 64 multiplies in parallel and can work on essentially 64 elements of a feature map simultaneously, accumulating in high resolution the intermediate results of those multiplies. But in parallel with doing 64 multiplies, we can also do massive data reorganization in which we can reorganize 128 weights or pixels or intermediate features into a different organization of those 128 weights. We can also take advantage of the requirement for huge data flow coming in with up to uh, 1024 bits of data being pulled into the processor every cycle. And we have novel uh, table lookup mechanisms that allow us to implement direct computation by table lookup of nonlinear functions or rapid uh, polynomial expansion of those nonlinear functions for even greater accuracy. When we implement something like a convolutional neural network, for example, for traffic sign recognition, we find that even though each of the passes, each of the layers in that algorithm is quite different, we achieve consistently high utilization of the available compute resources. Most of the multiply bandwidth, most of the data reorganization, most of the load store, and can effectively 
uh, build something which is running at very close to the multiply bound, which is about as good as you can get. And so we have shown that in a general purpose processor like the Vision P5, we're not only able to do classical vision processing, but we can do very effective work on this new category of algorithms, convolutional neural networks. And so it's turning out to be an almost perfect combination of features in a processor. As you evolve the algorithm, as you decide what mix of traditional image processing, traditional uh, vision processing, and this new neural networks capability, all of that can run together effectively on uh, this new category of vision processors. So that's a little taste of what's going on in mapping neural networks onto a vision processor. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to seeing you again at another Whiteboard Wednesday.